Hi, for today's start done, we have this some hospital equipment, the Datascope Multinex Plus. So it is actually a brief analyzer or a gas uh, analyzer or brief monitor as you want that will uh, monitor the brief, the uh, cardiac pulses, I believe, thanks to a finger probe on monitor the inspired and expired gas, in particular saturation of oxygen, carbon dioxide, uh, N2O, and also uh, anesthetic gas, anesthetic gas, but I do not think this uh, unit does detect them, you need an external add-on unit, according to the information I have found. So it was Super cheap on eBay for parts only. Actually, uh, eight British pounds. And I did purchase it with the purpose of scrapping it anyways. I cannot keep such equipment, so strip it for parts. Maybe try to sell some parts to uh, refund my purchase. And it is good. I was not planning to keep it because thanks to Pit Nebos. It was badly damaged in shipping. They did just wrap it in uh, bubble wrap and in a black plastic bag with no cardboard whatsoever. And given it is uh, 10 or 12 kilos, something like this, of course, at some point it was dropped maybe into a conveyor belt or uh, by someone. And the corner here is broken, but also the wall front piece, front panel is. Uh, shift on the side and out of alignment so it is pretty bad uh, luckily enough the cathode ray tube here was not broken so we will be able to power it on and see what happens so how i will do this video first we will have a look at the front and at the back we will do a power up i will show you quickly an overview of the insides then I will strip everything apart and we will have a close look at every one of the parts. So it will be quite a long process. So on the front we have here a broken power on switch, completely broken. We have trace uh, touch buttons in the frame here, Amber CRT display. Over controls here, some menu access here, your uh, main indicators here, pulse rate, CO2, anesthetics, and uh, agent select. I don't know what it is, this one. You have your patient uh, finger probe plug, and you have your patient uh, air input. It is all for the front. On the back, quite interesting. We have your regular uh, hospital grade mains input with dual fuse, voltage select, grounding, a very noisy fan that is actually also an access panel to the sample chamber of a gas analyzer inside, which is quite uh, interesting. Uh, in fact, it gives uh, access to the thing. We have here the O2 cell. It is the oxygen sensor. It is actually a replaceable module. This one is uh, completely uh, expired since 2007. It is called the ST12 oxygen sensor. It is a uh, Part you can still purchase for eighty dollars. I do not know if there is no acid in this because I know sometimes the gas sensors do use acid, and I do not want to spill acid everywhere. So I am not sure if I will open this little unit or not. But it is a user replaceable unit because obviously it is using some kind of reagent or liquid that will. Uh, vanish or expire in some way. You have here a waste fluid tank with two uh, 
probs for uh, overflow of it to detect the level. So it's easier to condensation water, you believe. Some interfaces to other equipment. E gas exhaust. Uh, room air input to measure apparently the percentage of uh, carbon dioxide in air through this uh, filter. Oh no, in fact, it does remove carbon dioxide. It is called the Datascope CO2 Scrubber Cartridge. It contains crystals of uh, soda lime. Interesting. And here we have the Datascope Multinext Dataset. It is actually just a piece of circuit board with one EEPROM. But someone in the marketing department of Datascope considered it was very important to find a name for it, the dataset, and to register a trademark for the dataset name. For one uh, plug-in card, you will insert one time in the device and never go back to it. They probably lost a lot of time or, and money for this. And I do not see really the reason why you should do this. Because the dataset brand or name is not uh, famous anymore by now and nobody knows about it. Model and serial number. Here apparently it is from the mid 90s this device. So quite old. Okay, now time for power up. So as the main switch is broken, it is permanently pressed in, so I need to connect the main lead to power on the device. And, spoiler, it does not work. But at least you can see it turns on. It should, yes do a self-test. The display is super, super dim and bad. Very worn out. I don't know if you can see, but we have burn, burn marks everywhere. And you can hear the terrible fan, fan noise. Self-test, okay. Beep. Power on. Uh, I do not know. Something is out of alignment and everything is moved to the left on this display. We are downloading here apparently a piece of so software from the uh, EPROM card on the back to the main processor unit. Because apparently you can uh, have different options that will be uh, fed uh, through uh, EPROM. It is done and now it is calibrating. While it is calibrating, well, while trying to calibrate, we can go in the menus here, so actually you will set uh, up on the lower levels uh, for each one of the things. SIO2, pulse rate, ETCO2, INSPIRED O2, so inspired O2 FIO2, respiration rate, and the percentage of inspired agent. Here it does not do a lot of thing. It is changing the scale of the display here. We have mute function and not much. And now you have, we have to wait for this uh, countdown to finish. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Lift off of a Multidex Plus calibration in progress because it is not done yet. And it will eventually give a fatal error because probably our oxygen sensor is dead or maybe also the gas analyzer inside and it will do not go anywhere else
well you get the idea anyway it was the last power on of this device so I will ah here we are system fault it does not tell exactly what system fault it is maybe there is a secret uh, thing to do with the keys to access uh, maintenance menu but I do not know what it is and have error codes or something like this but obviously something is wrong somewhere at least one thing but I believe given the condition of the thing that a lot of things are wrong and it will not go any better because oh, I have a count here interesting but uh, and it is trying again to calibrate and it will do it for hours I did already try so last power off ah much better okay now I will open the cover and we will have a first view inside so actually the wall cover of the device has just four screws on the top and everywhere around it is a metal latches that are supposed to clip in the metal frame and secure the cover but given everything is out of alignment you can see here in particular this front panel is completely sideways because of the shock so it is not possible to install anymore the cover in the correct position it is really a luck I was not keeping attending to keep this device but anyways it is going in parts but it is a bad uh, practice of uh, picking a buzz of packing stuff like this in particular when it is heavy so here is the cover off we have provision for securing optional stuff in the cover with uh, screw threads covered with little stickers Thing. and now we have a first look inside so on this side a massive circuit board obviously the processor one with the data set on the side other side is mainly power supply quite a large switch mode power supply actually and your uh, cathode ray tube with here a power resistor secured to the side of the cathode ray tube frame but apparently uh, part of the power supply which I believe have some quite uh, nice bulge inside and on the front on the top here excuse me here is what it looks like so you can see we have actually one two three four five circuit boards in this area we have your uh, cathode ray tube driver board uh, this the display driver board here here a lot of pipes for the uh, air stuff to happen with uh, expensive pressure sensor here flow sensor some electromagnetic uh, valves connection here to the oxygen sensor and uh, here your uh, CO2 filter which is actually made in, into a syringe regular syringe they did use for the CO2 filter holder and where are the gas analyzer and probably air pump they are hidden here below it is why you cannot see them so far but if I undo this fan actually we will have a little bit of uh, access to the gas analyzer section because it is where you access in order to replace your uh, access for sample chamber apparently according to the user manual I found online this 
this uh, DS. Here you can see the CO2 on the N2O gas analyzer section. So quite a compact thing, 15 centimeters or something like this. Not terribly big, but I hope we will have some nice sensors on the light sources inside here. It will be the last part of the video of this, this unit. Your very noisy fan was provided by Colmer Rotron Sprint DC 12 volts DC fan. Maybe after cleaning and re lubricating it will work fine. But uh, I have already a big stock of fans and I do not need it. Okay, now time to take apart everything.
Wow, guys, that was actually pretty long, pretty complicated with a number of screws. Some of them were stuck, also very hard to undo connectors. But we are done to the metal frame. As you can see, so for some reason of this power supply, they use two uh, thumb screws and two regular screws. It was quite a pain. Also, this uh, motherboard was attached by a million of screws, or billion, or quadrillion, or whatever you want to say. But we are done now. I end up with this for the scrapyard. Sadly, all the metalwork here is uh, steel, so it is worth almost nothing at the scrapyard. And the hidden side. Here you have the pile of parts, which we will have a close look right now. And with the most important one, of course, your gas analyzer package. But as you can see, quite a lot of stuff to dig through, and also to finish cleaning, as this uh, back panel nailed with. Uh, Still a lot of things to undo and quite a lot of electronics to go through. So let me uh, clean the mess and I will be right back with the overhead camera and we will have start to have a look at everything. So we are back with the glorious overhead camera mount. I will show the parts in no particular order, just like they come. Ah, here the mains switch, which was stuck because of the front panel out of alignment. You can see they did use a regular switch with prolongators or extenders, whatever you want to call them, which are actually pretty hard to unclip. The first one is broken, but this thing might be handy, so I will keep them. About this switch, I am not sure, it must be quite uh, worn out. Anyways, okay, one thing out of the way. Next, the power supply. So, if you remember, on this connector from the power supply, we had the power resistor here secured to the side of the vacuum ray tube assembly, vacuum tube assembly, CRT. CRT, we will call it this CRT. So, here we have in this aluminium frame a stack of two circuit boards that is uh, apparently making a switch mode power supply. So, I will zoom a little bit. You can see mains input, regular filtering, unpopulated parts here, half voltage rectifying on the capacitors. So all your regular power supply stuff. I will not unbolt right now the bottom PCB because I did just unplug the device. So uh, the, these capacitors might still have quite a bit of charge. But I believe it is safe to undo the top board here and it will give access to everything anyways. Here we are. So this seems to be uh, control regulating board, oui, because, yes, because we have uh, trimmers here, so it is voltage regulation on controls. A lot of uh, BY, I do not know this brand, clips. Nice capacitors, totem capacitors. And regular stuff, LM393, LM324, two of them, not socketed, big old school carbon resistor here for some reason. This may be a relay. And here we have the main part of the power supply. You can see the first, the uh, transformer in this is really tiny. Quite uh, amazing, like uh, four, four centimeters or five centimeters yes, in each direction. Interesting. And look what we have here. 
So apparently the power resistor was bobbed on this connector because they did solder the wires here at the back of the main output connector from the power supply. We have a lot of little coils, but look at this. It looks like they did use tantalum, wet tantalum capacitors here at the bottom, mill grade. Shielded capacitors, and for some reason they had to add extra electrolytic capacitors. This one being directly connected in parallel of uh, one of the outputs of the power supply. So for extra smoothing of the output, something like this. And it looks like in the heat shrink here they did add a so a resistor. We have the same thing here in parallel of this big resistor and apparently one more here in each shrink with zip tie. Uh, I do not know if the holes for the zip ties are original or not. They do not seem terribly clean on the edge. So it must be a modification, this thing. Again a resistor in series and connected again in parallel here of this capacitor. Quite interesting. Uh, the transformer is made by Power Magnetech in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. And yes, it is a US made device. Made in America. Yeah. Uh, on the side we have all the MOSFETs, power transistors, power diodes, whatever you want. Also a temperature sensor here apparently. More on the other side. And it is also, as I said, here we have some thumb screws that are securing the, this unit. So I will uh, try to salvage all those thumb screws because it, they can be actually quite uh, useful. Okay, I will. Uh, do I reinstall or not this thing? I will just replug this but anyways I believe everything is going to scrap so I will take a decision about this power supply later I have already a lot of power supplies so I do not really need to keep it for projects so I will see that it is one thing done also we continue okay. we continue with what uh, excuse me, if you find the parts. Ah, yes, of course. Your famous data set. Datascope Multinex data set. Trademark. For one tiny board on one EPROM, which is not even socketed. Quite a shame. Well, it is what it is. Need this. So the front panel, we have still some stuff secured to it. Apparently there is a tactile membrane here for the controls, which is connected here. Lucas Duralit Assembly Department, five fifth month of 1996. Okay, we have. You can see the. The damage here on the side, how it is all bent out of shape. This side is not so bad, but still a little bit. And we have obviously more screws to undo to uh, retrieve the, these parts and save more imperial screws. But I already have quite a lot of them. We have here the patient probe connector, the patient air input connector. Okay, the way these little uh, air hose hoses are very hard to undo also. I will keep them because it is always good to have such little stuff, such stuff like little pipes. You never know when you need them. Okay, and here we have the uh, LED display assembly that I will undo for you. Thanks to my shiny new set of Imperial socket sets. Uh, 
three sixteenth, seven thirty two, one fourth, nine thirty two, five sixteenth, eleven thirty two, three eight, seven sixteenth and half inch. Why, why, why God doing such weird shapes? And actually, uh, the difference between each two is uh, almost not possible to see. The very thin difference you can see, and sometimes it is really difficult to locate the correct one. Quite amazing. But here I did shape a little bit and already select the correct one to undo those aluminium handoffs. You can see big row of uh, gold pins here. Here is the back plane. It looks like we have a full aluminium sheet in this uh, front panel glued. But it will be good maybe to retrieve for scrapyard. And here a filter piece of filter glass or plastic for the display. Mostly, most of you probably plastic with a seal all around to prevent dust, but it did not work. Okay, this is out of the way. So here I said we have a big row of pins. Here are your LED displays. Sadly, they are not socketed, so they will not be easy to salvage. HDSP7511 individual individual display and HMH LMP2300 and they did so bent the pins on the back so really no luck here about salvaging these things and this big row of gold pins did connect onto this controller board with three Aris uh, display drivers, seven segment display drivers, it seems. Lot of chips here, some Altera one here, programmable device probably. And here everything is socketed, so it is good. If anything is worth uh, some money, I will be able to salvage them. But so far, the most expensive uh, piece is I have found is a pressure sensor. Ok, so this is this assembly, I put it back together for now, I know there is at least the ICs to salvage. Well, we are the it, more metal work. The back panel, with your slot for your data set. And as I said previously, this uh, carbon dioxide filter. Holder is actually just a syringe from the BD brand, very regular brand, 20cc syringe. So quite uh, well, it did not make a custom part for this, but use, uh, use a readily available, uh, off the shelf, uh, medical syringe. Interesting. So here our uh, oxygen sensor. So if anyone knows if it is dangerous or not to open this thing, I will be interested. I will not do it for now because I do not know if it is, if it is not uh, acid in this or something nasty like this. As there is an expiration date, there must be some kind of liquid or something like this. So I, pref I did research them. I found a website speaking about new technologies with only optical uh, photo. Uh, optical components, but I did not find anything with uh, about this particular model and the technology used. Apparently there is some kind of fluid involved, so I prefer not to trig it for now. It is mounted onto this uh, little mount with its connection. Here your uh, sump, it is called in which we add the little bottle with the two electrodes for sensing the level. Exhaust port, little alarm speaker, and it is all. 
So I will finish cleaning this off camera. You do not need to see me doing any more scrolls on here. There is this interesting sticker, but actually the background was printed, it seems, in red. And it is completely worn out. I can just read of Los Angeles. So it must be about the maybe the uh, security uh, rules in uh, California, which are uh, harder than everywhere else in the world. But I cannot read anything else. There is some kind of uh, serial number or uh, license number or something like this. Okay. So this is good. Uh, quickly, the uh, CRT assembly. Same here, I will not deal with it right now because I did just power off the device. So we might still have some high voltage stored in this CRT and you can see the very bad burn mark on it. We can still read the stuff. So there is here a quite clean actually driver board. That could be reused or salvaged, so it might be uh, useful for someone. Must be a quite generic part, also. Oh, I can see nice uh, silver mica capacitors here. Little flyback, and here on the back, the display controller board with uh, three Hitachi ICs. Uh, here, the other ICs are not socketed. By the way, uh, 16 MHz quartz oscillator. And it is all. I will put this in a safe place for now. What next? Ah, we have a backplane where everything was connected. It was secured by a lot of screws to the frame. We have some kind of uh, probably inductor here. Uh, more power supply uh, smoothing capacitors. Your positronic brand plug here. Nice uh, resistors here also. A lot of gold pins. Your power supply plugs. Nothing in particular. Brand of the PCB is Daisai. Okay. What next? Before we, uh, we will continue with the electronics, I must not forget the main PCB, which is here. So, it must be the processor one, as we have the dataset port. Here, Excuse me. Um, more Itachi chips. HD 69B09. Air 65C. Tutu P2. Big eye. Take note of what they are. Interface adapter, this one. I did not find which one is particular. We leave the processor. We have a lot of. Altera chips here, programmable devices with a little window. IP600 IDC. So it would be quite nice to look at. Dallas chip not socketed, which is uh, completely stupid when you know that this thing will die. It is one with a uh, built in uh, backup. Uh, battery and it is worth 25 euros if you need to replace it. And here apparently more uh, analog front end it seems. Yes, LM359 358 so must be up amps, a lot of them. And you can see yes, the EPROM uh, slot here. All the tracks are going here directly without uh, passing through this area. Oh, and here, maybe it is why it does not work. 
Do you see this? Our capacitor number five was a total amp capacitor, but it is now completely dead. Quite well exploded, by the way. I did not find uh, any parts of the capacitors in the case, so it must be an old failure. But nobody did replace it. Ah, some bulge here, you can see. They added an uh, electrolytic on the resistor here. This might be a nice thumbnail for the video, maybe. I will see this one. Okay, we continue with the electronics, with the other PCBs. So this assembly, it is not written what it does. Ah, excuse me, it is written Andros switch mode regulator. So again, one more regulator. They were quite serious about the power supply regulation in this thing, by the way. Two power, apparently this uh, section with two GPS brand ACs. It is the first time I see this brand. One more Dallas thing with, with socket this time. And this might be 8727C. So this might be a microcontroller. We have a quartz for it. Some uh, bulge here with, uh, it is written, Pulse stretcher. So I do not know if it is a front end for the uh, patient side, maybe. Quite interesting. A lot of crystals. Very nice uh, ices. We continue with one more board covered with ices. Again, uh, the last one with our socket. Again, uh, microcontroller apparently. Again, Altera, programmable devices. A lot of them really in this thing. And here, most of the parts are again socketed. But we have no information on this board about what it does. Okay, we can continue with this board which is apparently uh, very seriously shielded with two layers of uh, circuit boards that is used as shielding so must be for uh, something so probably the uh, interface to the gas analyzer I guess here even the boards are not detailed it is quite hard Prelam brand on this PCB, and here is what we have. One more iProm or microcontroller. iProm this one. ST Microelectronics M27C64. Ok, and apparently, yes, a lot of analog parts here, so it is some analog front end. Not sure if it is for the patient uh, interface or the gas analyzer. But very serious shielding with one metal standoff connecting the top shielding. And here a nice set of socketed ICs at least which is always good. So why is it socket some ICs and not the other ones? I have no idea. Uh, we continue with... Uh, I will not show you the bunch of cables. Uh, uh, noodles. All the air pipes connecting the gas analyzer and such. So we have... Uh, here, I did not test something, at least here we have probably a problem. 
this was like this. Maybe it is the shock in transit, but the connection here is uh, one is uh, destroyed, and this coil will not work at all, at least. So we have four of these neutronics valves. Actually, two ways. Yes, pneumatic valves. Might be interesting to salvage the good ones at least. Uh, we have here, this is a flow sensor. It is worth uh, not far from 100 euros. So I will probably save this thing. And here we have one other device. Uh, $400 Fresio sensor from mic micro switch very interesting I will show you the model number anyways everything is coming apart so I will here and solder you can see the wires to the sensor are uh, solder to the board as it is something valuable, I will unsolder them properly. But here is the model number for you. Like this. So this is a keeper, obviously. Expensive part. Probably good because I do not think uh, this device do fail often. In the pipes here, we have some interesting uh, connections like this. Some, uh, this is uh, just a cap, it is a closed hand. We have, maybe for an option, something like this, some filters built in, it looks like. We have uh, wires, this is possible to disconnect. And uh, what did I notice? Yes, yes, this one is a weird uh, tube pipe thing in a sleeve like this. Interesting. And it is written actually O2 purge scrub and uh, calibration. Okay. Interesting. And we are left, I believe, if I do not forget anything, yes, we are left with the most interesting part, the uh, pump and gas sensor. So about this gas sensor, we have a big cable I can undo, out of the way. This is very obviously only a pump because you have two air connection and one two wire electrical connection to it so surely not a gas analyzer and you need a pump somewhere anyways so it must be this where the clamp here on this thing by the way a mix of uh, aluminium and steel Probably for magnetic shielding of a pump, yes, like so. Okay, and what do we have here? It looks like an aquarium pump, really. Oh, it is interesting. Manufacturer does not know the buyer's intent use for of the product with a big P and cannot warranty the product's fitness for the purpose intended. You should uh, determine proper suitability, blah blah blah. Okay. And it is actually a second nature whisper 300. It looks very much like some aquarium pump. You can see it, it, it seems also they did here uh, cut the original cable to fit someone something else. And I believe it will just be a membrane pump. There is no power voltage voltage requirement written. 
No, it is not written, but yes, very regular aquarium pump setup. So it will take uh, AC, this thing. Look at this, how they did uh, damage here the lamination to keep the coal in place. Very uh, cheaply made thing, actually. So it must be super noisy. I was not expecting this, really. An aquarium pump in a medical device. Well, no, quite a generic air pump that could have a number of uh, use, apparently. Quite fun. Okay. We are left with the most interesting part, of course, the gas analyzer, at least. So let me remove it from the frame. Here we are. So, this unit, quite complicated, we have obviously two heat sinks, one at each side. And we have a manufacturer label here, so I need to undo this mounting bracket to reveal it and see what we have exactly in here. Oh, this brand, Andros, it is a brand we have seen of, on the PCB. Actually, into the double sided one, it will it. This one. So it is the uh, driver to this sensor, Andros Analyzers Incorporated, Berkeley, California. Nice silent number. So we have obviously on this side the sensor side, as you can see, big connector. We have here probably some kind of light source side. And we have, we will start by removing this little cover, which was the one you could access by the, from the fan of the device. So it will be actually the uh, user accessible part, because uh, apparently you need to replace it from time to time. Either to fit another purpose or because it is uh, worn out or clogged in, in, in some way. And what do we have in here? Hmm. Will it come or not? Yes. It does come. We have this assembly secured by a very nice piece of copper. Everything is non magnetic, by the way, in here. And this tube is actually a gas chamber because I do not know if we will see it, but we have a little window on each side and it will allow the gas will flow in and some light will shine through and by some black magic it will be possible to know which kind of gas you have. Really, really interesting. And here on the side, what is this? It seems to be the main sensor. But we will start by trying to have a look at this side here, probably some uh, very special light source. I have one screw here for a temperature sensor. So most probably an intercondescent light source. Ah, interesting thing. I did not expect this. Maybe it is even a Peltier cooler. So let me find out, excuse me, if I have the correct IMT for this. Because here, for some reason, they did consider it was expensive enough to put Allen screws. Not the correct size. Hmm. Is it metric? Really? Hmm. I will try this one, but it looks like it might be metric. Um, 
excuse me, if you hear um, any weird background noise, I have a neighbor which is addict to the power sander. It is power sanding everything in the house. With the matching vacuum cleaner, of course, to grab the dust and make no more noise. Not sure about the size of Allen screws. This is working, but it does not seem terribly good. Upon reassembly, I will try to find a better matching tool. Because this uh, expensive little assembly, I might keep it as a collector item. Will probably be the first complete part I will keep from this device. So, yes, it is coming in parts. So, this is our. Uh, I, excuse me. I guess we might have a Peltier Ivis. Not sure. The last screw is the longer one, of course. Super long screw, even. Ready? Wow. Okay. So what do we have in here? We have this, then this, uh, then uh, I do not know some uh, fuse uh, temperature sensor here and. Really a weird thing. I have no clue of what it is. Does it come apart further or not? Yes. Oh! I was not expecting this we have. So this I don't know, maybe... Uh, excuse me if it was a little bit of, out of the frame. Uh, I do not know. Apparently here we have a rotating filter wheel that will uh, have five different filters in front of something that is completely stuck and not possible to access. Try, but it looks like yes, this is stuck in place. Maybe I can try to undo the little screw in the middle. So we must have some light source in here. Not sure which uh, flavor it will be, but whoops, it was not the correct way to do. Okay. So probably uh, incandescent light source filament bulb, but uh, looks like it is pretty well secured in place. This thing. I was expecting to be able to uh, pry it out. I see like screw uh, post here, but there is no screw whatsoever. Quite interesting. No, I do not see anything in these holes, so maybe it is simply, uh, okay, uh, okay, oh, no, I know, we had a screw here, which I did break, and this is actually the uh, motor, uh, motor winding, it seems, that will actuate somehow this uh, filter wheel, oh, no, excuse me, here we are, one more motor and one light source actually okay I get this this is a light source not a temperature sensor interesting really interesting even it 
should require some reassembly. So this is the, the light source. And here we just have a little motor, probably super expensive one. By Kimco Magnetics Division Sensors and System Company. Okay, so I will reassemble this side and we will have a look at the other side. Okay, so of course, as you can guess, after such a disassembly, the calibration is ruined. It is not going to work anymore. But it was pretty interesting, this side. So now the apparently sensor side has just three Phillips screws. Quite serious uh, heat sinking, by the way, in this uh, compartment. And uh, here. Ok, we have front end for something that requires more disassembly as always. Free standoffs. Excuse me. Is it all? It allows to undo this part and show this sensor assembly it looks like we have in here something with a little Peltier cooler yes, you see the white uh, area it is a Peltier assembly and we have a sensor mounted on top of it so super super nice I believe if I undo the free Philips screws in here, you will have possibility to undo and have a better look. But there is no, oh, maybe here, CSI9616. So seems to be just a manufacturer code and dead code and 069 or 090 with a copper piece here. So super, super nice sensor. This board is definitely a keeper with this sensor. Well, this wall assembly at least. Super interesting. Not something I was expecting. So this is our black magic gas sensor, guys. Beautiful, beautiful part. Okay, I guess this will actually conclude this video. We have seen everything. So I hope you did enjoy the teardown of the... What is it already? Datascope Multinex 4000. Analyzer. This was worth the travel because it is my first time with such a, a device. Very, very nice. Nice gold bond wires in this. So, really, really cool. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Bye bye.